Welcome back. Uh, now to our next conversation. The federal government has completed the takeover of four electricity distribution companies and constituted the board of the Nigeria Electricity uh, Liability Management Company. Let's see how far uh, these actions will go. Talk, uh, to help us uh, make sense of this, we have Engineer Sunday, a uh, power utility consultant, joining us right here in the studio. Uh, great to have you. Thank you so much. So uh, the takeover uh, is completed now, and uh, apparently we have a new board. How do you see all of this uh, development? Yeah, uh, well, I believe it's in the right direction. Uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, federal government, on their own part, have their issues, and uh, they discuss to uh, maybe Nigerians know, uh, can judge better. I will tell you that over the time and over the period, over eight years of takeoff, uh, they have tried to see uh, that they muscle left and right to ensure that things goes right. But unfortunately, federal government had its own part to play, which they never played. Uh, they tried, but they, it was still in, in process. Then the discos themselves, have tried uh, several ways. We all know that when they were taken off, uh, at the time they were taken over, there were issues. They could not really assess uh, the, uh, the facilities in the disco because of the issues with the union. But then they took over and they started. And why, why do we really have to privatize the disco? Now to bring in discipline, to bring in private participation, such that when the disco take over, the issue of uh, maybe government cannot do business like, it, like the private uh, concerns will be a things of the past. But even then, after they took over, there were issues which they could not uh, deal with immediately. But I will tell you, the discos today are better off than when they started. Though Nigeria may not agree with me, right. but I'll tell you that they're a little better off than when uh, they started. They're just a little better off in, yeah. in, in your opinion. But do you think this move could resolve the tariff uh, shortfalls in, in the power sector? Um, well, I will tell you, the power sector is a regulated environment. And I will tell you, that can never resolve it. First of all, look at the, the Naira and the dollar crisis. What's the equipment we, we buy maybe for four million eight years ago is now about 15, 20 million. So tell me, the same disco we go to the market to buy the same equipment, you know, to better the lots of uh, their, uh, their system, how will they break even with this kind of tariff? It's not possible. So the federal government has to look into that and try to see. Uh, and talking about the federal government actually looking into this uh, tariff issue, what would you say should be the plan of action, you know, at this time? Yeah. Now, uh, at this time, I believe that the, though the federal government to some extent, uh, the, uh, the takeover of some of the discos, if it's transparently done, uh, and uh, maybe the balls are changed the way uh, they are going right now, I believe it could yield better results. But I'll tell you, it's still in the same pool. The same Nigerians are taking over. So what do they have to bring to the, to the table? That is one. So let me see, uh, looking at the dollar and the uh, Nara crisis, it is difficult for the, for the government, you know, to continue to maintain this tariff, this present tariff, and yet want the uh, discos uh, to break even, especially with, uh, 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 with the current uh, uh, power supply situation in the country. So even with this uh, current supply, you know, uh, with these tariffs we're seeing at this time, breaking even is, is nearly impossible from, as in your perspective. But one of the mandates uh, for the new board that's been set up by the federal government is to protect the interest, 
you know, of the citizens and, and the uh, consumers of electricity. And I'm wondering, do you think they can actually achieve that, you know, at this time? Seeing that even the, you know, uh, the discos are a, a strap, a cash, a, a cash strap at this point. Yes. Uh, anyway, I, I want to say that uh, the federal government on their own have woken up to some extent, and then the CBN are supporting disco. And I believe uh, if all goes according to plan, um, we could begin to see light at the end of the tunnel. Well, talking about light at the end of the tunnel, we would like to see light and constant uh, yeah. uh, power, you know, in this country. And, well, it's, uh, it's a time where, you know, it's a pre-election time and we've been battling with this whole uh, power issue in Nigeria for many years now. What would you say could be that turning point to, you know, make us actually stand out and say, okay, I, I, at some point, Nigeria can actually generate 24-hour power. You know, the companies can, don't have to rely on diesel, you know, to, to, to power their plants and all of that. What would you say is that move that we need to make at this point? It's a lot of sacrifice. Everybody, everybody has to do that sacrifice. First of all, corruption has been a major problem of the country. And I tell you today, we have gas problem. The generations cannot generate power because of shortage of gas. You recall that recently uh, there, was, uh, uh, there was a pledge to at least to generate 5,000 megawatts constantly. But as I, as I talk to you today, they are still managing to get to that point, 5,000 megawatts. And I tell you, what is the issues? First of all, the gas pool, I mean, the gas supply has issues right from the onset because Nigeria joined the gas pool, the uh, West African gas pool also, also. And because of that, they have forgotten that the same gas will be used, you know, to run our turbines in Nigeria. And because of that, you find that there's gas shortage every time. Today, if there's generation deep, the, the, I mean, the complaint has always been gas problem. If you look at what NIPP did, that is, uh, Niger, I mean, Niger uh, uh, dams, uh, I mean, uh, what do you call them, and did when they came on board, they have been able to bring in so many generating stations, you know, and they have a capacity in total close to about 30 megawatts. I mean, 13,000 megawatts. But today, what do we have? We are still, scrub, I mean, still grouping below 4,000, 4,500 megawatts. This is because of gas problem. And it was not a bad idea anyway for the government to have put all our eggs in one basket that is going gas, because that is the shortest way through which we can generate power. Now, we see that, you know, Europe is, they've been struggling with gas for a while now because, you know, Russia has turned off the taps and turned it back on and reduced capacity. Exactly. You know, but in Nigeria, we, we do have, you know, gas in Nigeria, but it seems we're, we're still struggling, you know, with, uh, with, with gas. But at the end of the day, we're, we're still, um, we're in a period, Nigerians will call a strike period. Everyone seems to be striking uh, these days. And recently we saw electricity workers actually, you know, pull off that strike. And the discos complained of losing billions, you know, with that strike. And I'm wondering, I think they've given the government about uh, two weeks. Yeah. And I'm wondering what next? Yeah, anyway, uh, I wouldn't want to double too much into that, but I believe that the uh, the trade union, they themselves, after taking that step, we have a rethink. You know, Nigeria is not to be toyed with. People should not just go to the streets and shut down the grid system. You know, you should shut down the grid system based on principle and people will see reason with you why you are shutting down the grid. The grid has to do with the economy of this country. Right. So why, why should they go that way? They shouldn't. So I believe that before two weeks, they will have everything. So we, we might not see, hopefully, we might yes. not see a, yes. Yes. <laughs> a strike. Well, the, the transmission arm, you know, of the uh, power sector value chain, some have described it as quite uh, problematic. Yeah. 
how would you how do you see that uh, sector yeah you see uh unfortunate unfortunately uh there have been very good plan you know by federal government especially for transmission uh especially i mean when it comes to implementation it has been a problem but i tell you part of the problems and issues at Bewithered Transmission Station, I mean, uh, company, is because of uh, how to uh, plant their stations and draw lines. Today, we have a, a station at uh, Okearo. That station is supposed to evacuate power to Alausa and to, uh, uh, to Lagos, anyway. Now, for over close to eight to 10 years, they couldn't do that because of right of way. They have to pay way leave, and every day the way leave is increasing and we expect by now the state government of uh, Ogun State and uh, Lagos State should have come together to ensure that that is done. Because you see, we cannot be playing leave sticks, uh, I mean leave service, so, so to say, when we have something to do and we are not doing it. Yeah, they have to come in and then they can solve that problem. And that, those are the problems all over. The transmission company of, uh, of Nigeria have planned to create a ring circuit in Lagos for the past 10 years. And as I talk to you, most of the places where they are supposed to do, I mean, uh, site transmission stations, they've not been able to do so because of either land issue or the other. Right, They're quite interesting because you know we've been, uh, I've experienced <laughs> power issues in this country exactly. practically all my life, and it'd be great to see, you know, at some point that we solve uh, this power issue because it, it will have an incredible domino effect um, uh, with the economy. Thank you so much, Engineer Sunday. You were a power and uh, utility consultant. It was great having your perspective on the show. Thank you so much. All right, now so. Uh, after the break, uh, we head on to the commodities market. We'll see what's uh, happening there. Quite a lot of volatility in uh, the market. That's our next conversation. Do stay with us. This is Business Morning.